What's going on, Vinyl Community? It's Tone, and I'm actually back a lot sooner than I thought I would be. Um, yeah, I just released, I just uploaded and released um, a VCLT video, a triple VCLT video, and I'm actually back rather quickly. I've, I don't think I've ever done a back-to-back -back that quick. But there's a lot I have to catch up on, and I want to get this going um, when I have time and I'm kind of on a roll, so... But what I'm going to do is I'm picking things from the past, I don't know, four or five months that I've acquired that I have not shown um, that I'm going to kind of split up between older releases, you know, bands and albums that are not new releases. And then I'll do another video um, subsequent right after this one uh, that I'll release in a few more days after that will contain recent finds new stuff anyway i uh, want to get going um normally have music playing in the background i didn't put anything on i'm not going to stop the video to do that but i do have um just want to show you what i've been really listening to a lot lately maybe the past month i've been delving deeply again into uh les claypool and into sean lennon collectively known as the lennon claypool delirium I've just been really, really crazily getting into them I'll, again a lot lately. I just love them together. Um, and I think that Les Claypool and Sean Lennon together as a musical entity really fit better than, I know a lot of people are going to probably flame me for this, but better than Les Claypool as Primus in Primus. So, um, of course, you know, I've got... A, crap ton of Primus things and I love Primus I love Les Claypool from that of course that's where we get him from but Sean Lennon and him together man I was never really a Sean Lennon fan um I, I just wasn't and then when I was kind of introduced to him uh through this ensemble I gained an entirely new respect for Sean Lennon. But in this lineup, Sean Lennon really just shines. Just shines and shines and shines. So uh, really been listening to a lot of them lately. This is their debut, Monolith of Phobos. This is their sophomore, South of Reality. And this is the 2017 uh, RSD release that they did. Their 10-inch EP called Lime and Limpid Green. Um, all of them are fantastic. So that's what I've been listening to a lot lately let's get into the things i found um i'm a huge classical music fan i don't talk about it a lot i do mention it here and there but i do have uh an absolute deep love for classical music being not only just because i am a musician but because it, it's always fascinated me it's been a huge inspiration to me um in my casual life as as a music listener and also in my professional life as a producer and a songwriter um and so when i come across something really cool in classical music in the classical music genre uh in terms of media i get really excited so i came across um uh a deutsche grammophon recording by william kempf wilhelm kempf i'm sorry william kempf wilhelm kempf i've He's always been one of my favorite pianists, um, mid-century, mid to later century uh, classical pianists. And, you know, if you look at the entire Deutsche Grammophon uh, catalog, he really inundates a big part of their catalog. Um, and so I came across this recording where he is doing piano sonatas, uh, Beethoven piano sonatas, and I fell in love. And as I was listening to this, I found this, I think I found this at Salzer's Records in um, North LA, in Ventura, California. And I realized that this is part of a an unspoken series through Deutsche Grammophon. And so when I researched that, I realized there's about 10, is it 10 pieces? 11 pieces in this unspoken series. And so I scattered to pick all of them up. I The first one I got... Uh, on lot on in store at Salzer's and coincidentally it was the first one in the series so I just picked the first five or six 
to show you. So this is the prefix in the catalog number is 138. This one is 935. You can see that right there. 138, 935. And then there is... Um, 936, 937, 938, sorry about the glare, 939, and 940. Uh, I also have 941, 942, 43, 44, and 45. Um, love them. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, I think Alan, Static Traveler, look into those. You'll enjoy them. I love piano sonatas, and of course, you can't beat them uh, when they're Beethoven's. And with Wilhelm Kempf on the uh, on the keys, fantastic. All of these pressings throughout the whole series that I have, nine three to, to uh, nine three five to nine four five, are either very first pressings, which were right around nineteen sixty eight sixty seven or early, early reissues, no later than the very early 70s. And uh, so I'm very happy to have those. The next thing I picked up uh, is Luis Gasca. And I saw Paul over at X Junkie NL, Paul at X Junkie NL there in the Netherlands, Holland. He showed this a few videos back. And, you know, he plays snippets of stuff when, when he shows records. Man, I was blown away. Um, I'd never heard this album. I'd heard Luis Gasca. My dad owned stuff, but never this one. I don't. I didn't own anything by Luis Gasca, even though I grew up listening to some of it. Um, talk about now, Luis Gasca. For those who don't know, is a Latin, and I don't mean just the style. I mean he is a, in terms of his, his his heritage. He's Latin. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly where from. He may be Mexican, he may be from South America, Puerto Rican, Cuban. But anyway, he's a, tr a jazz trumpeter and jazz flugelhornist. And he's fantastic. Talk about a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, jazz fusion slash uh, soul jazz record. This is 1972 on Blue Thumb. It is a first pressing uh, and... A lot of people refer to this as his self-title. It is his debut uh, LP, and um, but it does have an actual title that's not printed anywhere on the side labels or on the jacket. Um, and I believe the title is, I always forget the title of this record. I think the title is um, For Those Who Something. It's For Those Who Something. I'll put the title down below uh, so you guys can look it up. Maybe I'll put a link to a track off the record too, but a uh, great soul jazz slash fusion album. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful record. Thank you, Paul, for showing that, man. Uh, I was on the lookout for it and about a week and a half after I saw Paul show it, I was at Record Surplus. Um, <laughs> there it was on the wall. Picked it up. Love it. Love it. Um, this next one, I also picked up, um, I'm going to show this next one here. Where's that? Uh, I picked this one up at, um, Record Surplus as well. Uh, Record Surplus is here in Los Angeles. It's one of the, the bigger stores, uh, in, in LA. And, um, if you go back to one of my earlier Record Store Spotlight series videos, I did, uh, I, I spotlighted Record Surplus. I'll put a link down below if you want to check that store out. But I also found this. This is Inner Life by Paul Brett. Paul Brett is a British um, progressive rock guitarist, and he's fantastic. This is not his first release. This is um, a later 70s release of his. It's called uh, Inner Life. This is the UK or the US cover. The UK cover looks a little bit different. Uh, he puts a twist to his music on this record. Um, it's predominantly progressive rock guitar, but he throws in elements of um, fusion, jazz fusion, and also some elements of uh, blues rock into that progressive subgenre. And he does it beautifully, even throwing some nylon string 
classical um, elements in there that just are just wonderful. And so 1978 on RCA Records, Paul Brett, Inner Life. If you get a chance, man, highly recommended. Super, super, super highly recommended on this album. Um, this next one I got from Auction. Had their uh, sophomore release, which is their only two releases, their debut and their sophomore. This is their debut release. This is Red Eye. And this is 1970 on Pentagram, I think. I think it's Pentagram. Yeah, Pentagram. Uh, great, great country rock band. Not as talked about as much in the VC. I had heard them mentioned a few times. was able to get this in auction online. And uh, it is the first pressing. A la, let's say a la um, Humble Pie. Grateful Dead, right in that same pocket. Really good, fantastic country rock, early 70s, 1970 on um, Pentagram Records. Fantastic, fantastic. Again, I picked this one up online on uh, an auction. I think maybe it was an auction that uh, Memphis Vinyl Gym and the Misses were holding on Facebook when they were doing their weekly auctions or their bi-weekly auctions. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. This one I picked up locally too. I think I picked this one up at, um, I think I picked this up at Record Outlet. And I had, I had this band's, uh, sophomore album. Also, this is their debut studio record. And this, this is a progressive, um, rock ensemble from the Netherlands called Trace. Rarely hear anybody mention Trace. Um, these guys, and when I have, they're kind of hit on this. Uh, they're kind of an acquired taste. They're extremely, extremely symphonic. Uh, you know, ELP, even more than that. Um, who else? Just really super electronic, symphonic, progressive rock. Maybe even kraut rockish. But they're fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. This is 1970. I want to say it's either 72 or 74. I think it's 72. 1970. It's, 19, it's got to be 1974. 1974 on Sire uh, here in the U.S. And I think it was also Sire in the U.K. or in, in, in Europe as well. But they are a Dutch ensemble. And they are great. Um, never had this one. Have their sophomore album. I came across this one at Record Outlet, and it was just fantastic. So highly recommended if you uh, can handle uh, overtly symphonic progressive rock. Highly recommended. Trace, uh, self-titled debut album, 1972, on Sire Records. This next one, man, had the single on 7-inch 45 RPM record, and I have two of their earlier uh, releases. I think their 72 debut, and I think... It's their sophomore one that I have. But I didn't have this one, which is coincidentally their most well-known album, and that is Mother's Finest. Mother's Finest is a 70s uh, funk soul band. Unbelievably great. Fantastic, fantastic. This is their 1978 release on, um, I think it's on Epic, Epic Records. And the album title is Mother Factor, 1978 on Epic Records, Mother Factor by Mother's Finest. And um, the single off of this album would have been uh, Love Changes, which was actually redone in the 80s by, I want to say it was redone by Kashif and, oh, I forget who else. Maybe it was Kashif. Anyway, the original version of Love Changes, which is the best, is by Mother's Finest. And this album, man, I wish I had gotten it sooner. Uh, stumbled across this one. I think it's Salzer's Records. Pretty sure. And I, I snatched it up. It is a first pressing. It's fantastic. And I would highly recommend this band. If you're not familiar with Mother's Finest. In fact, I'll put the uh, link for the single off of here. And uh, if you see this album, man, pick it up. It's a great 70s 
uh, funk soul album and um, highly recommend it. Next and last, um, I snatched this up online. I saw it in store, and it what? And I and when I saw it in store, I searched it online because I had never heard this particular album by Lenny White, and um, loved it. So I didn't want to pick up the copy in store. I wanted to see if I could find a little bit better copy, and I did online uh, from a, a Discog seller that was here in Los Angeles, and I picked it up. It's Lenny White, Venusian Summer. 19, was it 75, I think? 1975 on Nemperer Records. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows Lenny White. It's fantastic, well-respected, very talented jazz drummer. And I think this was his first solo effort. I think this is his first solo effort. Um, and it's great. Talk about some badass jazz fusion album. This thing is smoking hot. If you are unfamiliar with any of Lenny White's solo uh, studio releases, start with this one. Um, even if this was his uh, la a later album, I would say start with this one. This thing will suck you right in. There's some points to this record that are a little, get a little strange, not that bad, but the majority of it is just, just amazing and uh, highly recommended. Lenny White, Venusian Summer, uh, 1975 on Nemperer Records. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. It shouldn't be that expensive. You should be able to find this copy is just in absolutely beautiful, flawless condition. As far as the jacket goes, the um, vinyl is near mint and it's just a great copy probably cost you if you find a good copy anywhere from eight to twelve bucks maybe 15 at the most if it's in real good condition so highly recommend it. okay guys that's it um thank you so much for spending time with me i'm going to follow this up the subsequent video uh same thing but just uh newer releases on vinyl uh and that's about it and i'll do this for the next month maybe i'll do a couple next month for both older uh releases and newer releases as well maybe uh but i do have the next one with new releases coming up and it's just going to depend because i do have a new uh, record store spotlight video coming up and i'm you know while i have the time to do it um, i'm just finding some time right now i'm gonna try to squeeze all those in um again thanks for stopping by and hanging out um and as always, I appreciate you guys, and God bless you very, very richly. All right, talk to you later. Peace.